Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very, very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this Sunday Stuff and Things, we will have stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. A, another successful wildlife shooting day. Not shooting day, but shooting, taking pictures day. Um, a quick observation about the state of the world and what people know and how we talk to each other and things like that. We're going to try to avoid politics in that. And then a brand new segment will wrap up the show. Well, actually, that won't wrap up the show. Ask Stuff and Things will wrap up the show, but the brand new segment will be the penultimate segment before the very last segment, which will be hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. So let's get into it. Okay, first, upcoming videos. The Valheim series is continuing on Stuff and Things Plays, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback from that series. Many of you are enjoying that, and I appreciate that a lot. It's a fun game. It's kind of frustrating sometimes, and you will see some of my frustrations coming out if you watch those episodes, but I'm really enjoying playing it, and I'm enjoying the feedback I'm getting from people in the comment section on Stuff and Things Plays. Those videos are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Things are heating up in Valheim. Things are getting a little harder. Kevin Kevinson is, uh, he's struggling a little bit, but he's, he's, he's very stubborn and he will persevere and conquer all comers. Um, I am getting lots of comments or some comments where people are trying to give me advice. And though I appreciate that, I am trying to do a blind playthrough and then also bear in mind that I am, I think a good month ahead with those videos. So as frustrating as it may be to see me doing something wrong over and over again, I probably will figure it out eventually, and I probably already have figured it out um, by the time you're watching the video that you're watching. But anyway, thank you all so much for checking that out. And then of course, it was voted on by you as the next blend that I would do a first impressions video on and a review. And I finally recorded that first impressions video today. It is Esoterica Tabakiana Stonehaven. Super hyped up blend. All the Esoterica blends have a lot of hype. Um, mostly because, well, I'm not going to say mostly. A, a, a large part of that is due to the fact that they are so impossible to get, especially if you're in the U.S. They just never really show up online. If they do show up online, they get sold out immediately. I can't get anything online because I live in Washington, so it's even more difficult for me to get my hands on these, but this was sent to me by a very generous viewer, and you guys voted. It was. It came down to between this and Robert McConnell, <sighs> Scottish cake or Scottish flake? Now I'm forgetting. I think it was Scottish cake. Um, I've got the tin somewhere, so don't worry, I know which one it was. Well, I don't know which one it was right now, but I will once I look at the tin. Anyway, between those two, you guys voted on Stonehaven. It was pretty close, but Stonehaven ended up edging out the McConnell blend. I did the first impressions video today, and I have to say, mm, yeah, it's pretty good. Now, I try to separate my excitement about even getting this blend and getting to try it from the actual flavor of the blend. And I try to just look at it on its own merits. Obviously, it's the first impression that'll be posting this Wednesday, so it's not the full review. Sometimes my impressions change throughout the week or two that I'm enjoying the blend and, you know, getting ready for the review. As of now, it's quite interesting. It's quite tasty. I think you should check out that first impressions video of Esoterica Tabakiana Stonehaven this Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you. So I've been keeping you up to date with my travails, I guess, in trying to get wildlife photographs. I have my Canon R6, which I'm using to film this video right now. On it at the moment is the 24 to 105 uh, L kit lens that came with it. So it's the F4, yeah, F4 kit lens. I had gotten the RF 600 millimeter F11, which is a crazy, crazy narrow aperture, but you can take some good pictures. And I'm finally starting to prove that. I showed you one last week that I found of a red tail hawk, or I got of a red tail hawk, and the hawk just happened to land in a tree 
um, in front of my place, like it was in the backyard. So that was very lucky. And so I've been taking the camera, sometimes the whole bag, my dumpkey, dumpkey bag with all the different lenses and everything. Sometimes I take that whole kit, that's pretty big. Sometimes I just take the camera with the 600 millimeter lens on it, but I've been doing that every single day I go to work, unless it's just gonna be raining the entire day. And I'm getting lucky. I'm actually getting some good opportunities and it just goes to show you have to have your camera with you. If you wanna take pictures, obviously you've gotta have the camera because you never know when the opportunity will rise. And case in point, I think it was Tuesday of last week, I showed up at work, um, we're working out in a place that's kind of close to the water, north of here, north of Bellingham. And I got out and I think I was already doing some stuff and my brother who works with me as well, he was like, what's, what's that over there? And I get up and look and just, I don't know, maybe 20 yards away is a tree overlooking the water and in the tree is sitting a young uh, bald eagle. So a juvenile bald eagle who still has, doesn't have the white head yet, but just kind of brown mottled all over, still very large, especially at that distance. And in the same tree was a crow and they were hanging out together for quite a while. And I managed to get some very cool pictures. Let me show you one of my favorites right now. So as you can see, I mean, obviously crows and eagles are not good buddies. I think I, I posted it on Instagram and I had the heading friends with a question mark. And of course, I know that crows are not friends with eagles and vice versa. Sometimes crows mob eagles, try to chase them away. Sometimes eagles grab crows out of the air and kill them. But these guys were just hanging out on this branch. And every once in a while, the crow would like ah! and caw at the eagle. And the eagle would kind of look up at it. But it wasn't that angry sort of alert caw that you hear crows make. It was just sort of, I don't know, inquisitive sounding maybe. I don't know if I can interpret crow caws. And the eagle would stare at the crow every once in a while, but for the most part, they were just kind of sitting there. A little temporary truce perhaps. Um, but the picture I got, which you just saw, I loved because the crow actually at that point was ah! cawing at the eagle and it looks as though it's scolding the eagle and the eagle's just looking up at it with those yellow eyes. And I was really happy with that shot. Um, and I got quite a few. I haven't edited all of them or even most of them. It takes a long time, but I'm, I'm sure I've got, I don't know, maybe 10 good shots out of about 160 that I took <laughs> that day. So, you know, the advice that most people give me, and it's one, something that I've, I've already kind of knew, is that you just take as many pictures as you can. Um, I don't have it on continuous shutter or anything like that. Sometimes I do, but usually I'm just taking individual sh shots. But typically if I see something interesting, I'll take 80 to 100 pictures and then I'll get five to 10 that I like and then maybe one or two that are really great. So anyway, I was quite pleased by that picture. I have some other, I, I found some wild rabbits, got some pictures of them, um, just all sorts of good stuff going on. And this is just in kind of a residential area. It's overlooking the water, but it's not out in the middle of the woods or anything like that. So I'm hoping that I can take some more excursions soon where I'm actually just trying to take pictures, but it seems that that always fails when I'm actually going out to get pictures. I rarely actually get anything that's good. So I'm just gonna keep bringing my camera with me and if the opportunity arises, I will snap the pictures that I can. A little sip of coffee here. Mmm. Okay, now the next topic is something that was inspired by the fact that I saw a news story about polling in the United States. And it was basically just trying to ask people what they thought of other people who did not share their political beliefs. Now, we're not getting into politics here. We don't wanna have cantankerous debates in the comment section below. But you've mentioned me, or you've heard me mention in the past that the fact that people don't seem to talk to each other or try to understand each other as much as maybe we used to is something that really gets me down and it's something that I think we need to really focus on and get past. Everything is so binary, everything is so contentious it seems all the time. And this news story, I'm not gonna link it or anything, but it, 
it really brought this home to me, where basically they were polling Democrats, polling Republicans, and asking what the other side thought of different issues. And people were so far off. Democrats thought that Republicans thought certain things about certain hot button issues, but when you poll the, the Republicans, they didn't necessarily think the things that the Democrats thought they thought, and vice versa with the Republicans and the Democrats. And it just goes to show you that we're all a lot closer than we think, and that the loudest voices, the most angry voices, are the ones that get all the attention, and they're the ones that the media draws attention to because they want clicks, they want people to go to those stories, they want people to talk. On social media, it's the same. Well, they don't want people to talk. They want people to react and get angry because anger is an emotion that they can monetize. And it's the same with social media. If you you have your feed on social media, it is catered to you and it is catered to push your buttons. So it wants to portray the other side. We shouldn't be on sides, by the way, but it wants to portray the other side as crazy maniacs who are trying to destroy the world. And so everyone is seeing these things that are geared towards making them angry. <clears throat> and it gets reactions out of people. And it serves to dehumanize the people who you live with, your neighbors. And I don't like it. And I wish that we could just completely unplug from social media. I wish that that was a just a trend that would sweep the country and the world. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but this is just my plea for all of you out there. And I know most of you are very, very reasonable, very cool people, but just try to cut out that noise, try to cut out social media as much as you can. And please bear in mind that the people with whom you may disagree politically are not necessarily the freaks and the monsters that the media and that social media tries to portray them as. We're a lot closer than we think. We need to talk to each other. We need to start trying to understand each other better. That's all. And now it's time for a brand new segment, which may or may not actually be a recurring segment on the Sunday Stuff and Things, and that is Snack Attack. Okay, that works, that works. So last week I mentioned, oh, we got some weird stuff going on here. Keep trying that, make sure we're still recording. That's good. Last week I mentioned that I was having a horrible time finding the garden vegetable Philadelphia cream cheese. And I discovered a snack that I absolutely loved, which is very, very simple. And that is taking a Triscuit, dipping it in the garden vegetable cream cheese and eating it or putting it in your mouth, masticating it, swallowing it, then digesting it. It's quite delicious, it's quite lovely, and for about a month and a half, the garden vegetable cream cheese had been unavailable in my local supermarkets. But today, <laughs> we have Philadelphia cream cheese. Uh, does it even say it on there? No, it does not. Philadelphia cream cheese, garden vegetable. This is the good stuff, this is the real deal. I have a paper towel right here. Let me unfold. We will place it down on the table. I have a fresh, unopened box of Triscuits. For those of you in the rest of the world, you may or may not know what Triscuits are. They are a Kraken. A Kraken? <laughs> the Kraken! Release the Kraken! They are a cracker. It is a 100% whole grain wheat Triscuit original, made with sea salt. I think these are available in the UK. I'm not totally sure. Um, let's read the back of the box. <clears throat> Grown with care. Our white winter wheat starts its journey in the thumb of Michigan, where generations of family farmers grow and harvest the wheat with care and consideration, making it primed for the Triscuit crackers you love. Top it with whipped cream, or no, top it with whipped cream cheese and heirloom tomatoes. Uh, well, we do have some cream cheese, no heirloom tomatoes. Um, obviously this is probably filled with preservatives and way too much salt and all that good stuff. They try to make it seem as though it's like farm fresh, all natural ingredients. It's not. I'm sure it's filled with chemicals. In fact, let me see. Chemicals? Chemicals? Uh, where are the actual ingredients? Oh, here we go. Whole grain wheat, canola oil, sea salt. That's it? contains wheat. That would be shocking if that's all that's actually in here. It has sodium, 
160 milligrams. What is uh, serving is six crackers. So in six crackers, you have 160 milligrams of salt. Yeah, all right. One serving gives you 11% of your dietary fiber. So these aren't horrible. There's zero sugar. Yeah, not bad. Actually, not too bad. Sorry, Triscuits, for doubting you. But I just want to show you this delicious, delicious snack. Here is a Triscuit. So it's like a little, I don't know, waffled cracker um, made of whole wheat. By themselves, I'm not a huge fan. Let me demonstrate. It's fine. Kind of dry, a little salty. But when you add the amazing alchemy that the good folks at Philadelphia Cream Cheese have achieved, fresh. Mmm. Okay. Oh, so cheesy, so creamy. Here's what it looks like you take a cracker. You dip the cracker. Oh yeah. You scrape up that cream cheese and you put it in your mouth. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So simple, so delicious. That's a good one. Very dry though. They claim on the tub of cream cheese that there are no artificial preservatives, flavors, or dyes. Is that true? Let's see. Total fat, 9%. What is the serving size? Two tablespoons is a serving size, <clears throat> or 31 grams. Um, there are seven servings per container. Total fat, seven grams, not bad. Saturated fat, four grams. Uh, cholesterol, so 20 milligrams, sodium, 170 milligrams. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's not great. You don't want to eat a whole tub of this. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pasteurized milk, it's cream, it's, it's all that good stuff. And all the bad stuff too that makes it taste so good. Let me just take one more. If you have Triscuits available in your country, if you have garden vegetable Philadelphia cream cheese available in your country, eat it. Eat it together. Mmm. So good. Hopefully none of you have mesophilioma. Is that the right word? Where you hate the sound of people chewing? Hmm. Oh, that was snack attack on stuff and things. Coffee with that. Mm. All right, gang. <coughs> and now it's time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. And that is where you ask questions of me and I try to answer them on the Sunday Stuff and Things. Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Leave comments on YouTube videos, ask questions via Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter, and I will try to get to your question in a week or so. 
Uh, we have several questions here. Not a lot. We only have three. We have one from Antonio Rico at Boni Tony. This is via Twitter, uh, Boni Tony one uh, Tony says, Hey, Tony. Hey, Bradley. If you could only smoke one of your pipes for the rest of your life, which one would you pick? Mm, that's a tough one. And I have so many amazing pipes now. So many more than I ever thought I had. I would have. I have several Dunhills. I have several Costellos. I have that Corallo de Mari that I was just using for the uh, first impressions video of Stonehaven. It's like choosing between your children. It's Sophie's choice. Um, I don't think I could pick just one. <sighs> All my Dunhills are amazing. I don't know that any one of them is better than any of the others. Same goes for my Costellos. Um, this Corallo de Mare is amazing. It stands up there with all of those. I can't decide. It's too hard. There are too many good pipes that I own to pick one of them. But thank you for the question. I'm still chewing the old uh, Triscuits. Wash it down. <clears throat> Next, from Tyler Brubaker. Hey, Tyler. At Tyler Brubaker 20, Tyler says, Hey Bradley, hope you're doing well. I know that you enjoy cigars, but you're not as into them as pipes. Would you say that you could smoke just one kind of cigar without bothering to try others? Um, I could easily just pick a... What are they called again? Uh, uh, Padron. Padron Natural. 2000, the 2000 Natural, or the Maduro, 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 uh, Maduro, Padron 2000 Natural, or Maduro, love them, I think they're fantastic, I've had a fair amount of other kinds of cigars, but I think they're just great, and I could, they're relatively inexpensive, I actually now I can't ever get them, um, I guess I could have my little brother send some to me from Texas or something, if he got some online, but uh, yeah, I love them. They're great. Next, from YouTube, Mark in Rhode Island says, um, and this is in relation to the HH Pure Virginia review, Mark says, do you find that cadence makes a difference? I have to sip on this to get the flavors right. Uh, yes. I find that especially with Virginia blends or straight Virginia blends and often with flakes that you don't want to get it too hot. You don't want it burning too hot and too... Uh, you just don't want a giant conflag conflagration in your pipe. You want to slow down a little bit, and it seems like the heat and the steam that can develop when you're smoking it too hot can really kill some of the flavor, typically. Um, and then we have a more of a comment, some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. This is from Epic 1981, and Epic says, Nobody, absolutely nobody, cares about your video games. Get smart. And now it's time for the very best part of the show, and that is where I thank you, the Patreon supporters, the people who make this show go, the people who make it possible for me to have equipment like this that you can't see, but there are lights there and a very expensive camera there. Blends like this, actually this was sent to me by a very, very generous viewer, but I also purchase vet blends quite a bit to review on the channel, other things of interest that I want to show you. All of that is made possible by the good, good people on Patreon. If you would like to support the channel, there is a link in the description box below. But every week, we like to shout out the people who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, John Leone, Christian Kovacs, Joshua Jackson, Gloria Phillips, Ryan McFadden, Matt Marino, and Joe Heafy. Thank you so much for your support. It is very much appreciated. And also, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month. People like our very good friend, Peter Straub, Bob McGee, and David Gudru. Thank you all. You make this all possible, and you make it so I can justify spending the dozens of hours that I spend every week making these videos for you all. But all of you are appreciated. Thank you for watching, for liking, subscribing. Make sure you hit that like button. 
I don't say that very often, but it definitely helps things get shown in the YouTube algorithm when you hit the like button and you leave comments and things like that. That is much appreciated as well. But gang, please stay tuned for the Stonehaven First Impressions video, which we'll be posting this Wednesday, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. The Valheim series continues with the misadventures of Kevin Kevinson. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Oh my God.